and welcome to our craft trail. Today we head to the center of India to bring you the story of the most amazing weave that is perfect for India. Only a woman could have thought of this one. We head to Maheshwar to tell you the story of the famous and iconic Maheshwaris. It's cool, rich, lustrous and light. The Maheshwari is really the perfect addition to your wardrobe. But what most people don't realize about this popular weave is that it is a young weave that celebrates the legacy of an amazing queen, Queen Ahilya Bai Holkar. The city of Maheshwar was the capital of Ahilya Bai Holkar from 1725 to 1795 CE. An astute leader and administrator, Ahilya Bai transformed Maheshwar into a commercial hub, inviting traders and artisans from across the region. Weavers were brought in from areas like Mandu and they created this special weave inspired by the city they called home. The most prized Maheshwaris are a mixture of silk and cotton called the Garb Reshmi that adds lightness and luster that is ideal for the hot summers of the region. In fact, under royal patronage, the Maheshwari soon emerged as the most sought after weave. With the fall of Maheshwar, its textiles too went into a decline. The biggest patrons of the Maheshwari saris were the royal and noble families from India. After independence, the patronage died out and the weavers fell on hard times. Almost wiped out between 1950s to 1970s, the Maheshwari is today seen as a successful revival story thanks to the efforts over the last four decades. This is the Maheshwari Weaving Centre within the Maheshwar Fort, started by the Reva Society set up by Ahilya Bai's descendant Richard Holkar and Sally Holkar. The society was set up in 1978 to revive the Maheshwari and also provide a means of local employment. Initially supported by the likes of noted handloom revivalists like Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay, Reva has come a long way. Richard Holker explains how it all started. Leela Mulgaonkar, she was um, the wife of Sumant Mulgaonkar, who was the head of Telco. She was at that time head of the Central Social Welfare Board. Uh, and she said, look, she's Maharashtra. Uh, so she said, look here, uh, why don't we put together an NGO? Uh, the Central Social Welfare Board will fund it. Our requirement is that you concentrate on giving employment to women. Uh, so, oh, fine, excellent idea. So, she gave us 86,000 rupees in 1900, I think in 77 or 78, around about that time. Uh, and we started off. And it was very difficult to get the weave, women to weave because the weaving had been done, the system of weaving in Maheshwar and in many parts of India, I'm sure it's the same, but basically the weaver is the guy. He's the weaver. Money is given, who's it given to? The guy. Now guys being guys, half the time they spend in the bazaar with their chums and half the time they're weaving. When they're not weaving, their wife is weaving. So readily skilled labor force, but no economic power and not enough money going to the home. Not enough money going to the home. So that was the objective of Leela Mulgankar. She said, we want to empower women. We want to have more incoming into the family itself so that the family can rise. Reva began with eight women weavers in 1978. The idea was to get local women well trained in their household looms to come and work with facilities. Richard Holker tells us that the idea was not just to revive the Maheshwari, but also make it relevant to changing tastes and styles. This was not always easy. The traditional skills and traditional craftspeople 
uh, are risk averse. They don't have bank accounts and savings accounts. If they have a bad year, a bad month or whatnot, they can fall back on it. They basically live almost hand to mouth. In any case, what they weave, they sell, but their sell comes into the home and it supports the household and so forth. Um, so um, they had been weaving the same thing, but no success did they have, you know. Nonetheless, it was very difficult for them to get onto our idea. And our idea, uh, my idea is just me and all these other uh, well-wishers, uh, was to make of the Maheshwari sari, at that time it was only saris being woven, a fashion statement. It took four to five years before they could understand, and we could also understand, that the market tastes change, the colors change, the borders change. Uh, if you don't keep up with this, then you're nowhere. The work done by the Reva Society between 1980 and 2000 was instrumental in transforming the weaving community in Maheshwar. From a fast dwindling community of 250 weavers, today there are more than 2,000 weavers in Maheshwar town. From saris, Reva Society has diversified into dupattas, shawls, stoles and dress materials made from Maheshwari fabric which are extremely popular. The growing number of weavers at a time when so many are shutting their looms across India is a testimony to the success of the revival of the Maheshwari. Richard Holker believes that the lessons learned from the work done here are relevant elsewhere across India. The only way that it can move forward as a niche product is in continually doing uh, interesting things which cannot easily be done either in the power loom or in the mill. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the mixture, purpose-made mixture of weaving and printing, weaving and embroidery uh, or ornamentation of whatever sort you want, is something which the hand loom can do. The revival of the Maheshwari has also rejuvenated Maheshwar, Ahilyabai's old capital. And the growing prosperity of the weavers here is evident. They have not just adapted to changing tastes, they are today also embracing change. You can find a whole range of gorgeous Maheshwaris on People Tree. And you can find a whole range of gorgeous Maheshwaris on People Tree. Do check them out.